Welcome, friends. I'm Christy Set Wagner, and I am the executive director of Bright Stars of Bethlehem. And at Bright Stars, our mission is to raise awareness and support for Dara Palmer University. And our our vision is that all friends in Palestine would have life and wellness and courage. I'm super excited to tell you today that, that our live events feature some of the same world changers to individuals that are graduate students at Dara Palma. These two gentlemen, I had the opportunity and the honor to meet when I was on my recent trip to Palestine. Now, my trip was pretty exciting. I uh, This is my second trip to Palestine. And this trip, I was able to stay 11 days, uh, incredibly action-packed. Um, we went to five, maybe eight cities. And uh, I traveled with my friend and my colleague, John Lindner was an amazing travel. Hebron was one of the cities that we visited. And I have to say that Hebron, for me, was one of the, the cities that had a vibrance to it and an energy. But there was also um, just a very palpable feeling of the occupation, the Israeli occupation there as well. One of the uh, highlights of my trip, again, was to meet these two gentlemen because of the ways that their creativity and their creative resistance is making a difference in Palestine. I I would like to introduce them by saying that again, they are two of two individuals that are artistically making a difference. But these two gentlemen are uh, well. Let's just bring them out. We we had a, we had hoped that Mitri uh, Reverend Mitri Rahab would join us today. Unfortunately, he is. Oh, there he is. He's surprising us. Okay, um, without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Reverend Dr. Mitchell. I have my colleague, my friend, a world changer, and he's going to introduce uh, these other two gentlemen today for us. Hey, Mitri, good to see you. Hi, hi, good to see you, Chris. So um, I'm going to let you, uh, prior to introducing these, these wonderful gentlemen, Iz and Ronnie, I I think we'd like to hear a little bit of an update from you on um, Palestine and what's going on. Great, yeah. So, yeah, sorry for being late, but um, we just finished launching uh, uh, the new the newest book uh, that comes out from Dar al Kalima University Press, uh, and it's about the Armenian community in Jerusalem, uh, and uh, especially during the Nakba 1948. It's called the, the Sega of Survival. And the author is my colleague and vice president, Dr. Varsin Agabikian. So we just finished that launching with uh, a huge crowd uh, here in East Jerusalem. And I'm sitting now here uh, at Newgate in Notre Dame uh, for this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, let me give you maybe uh, before introducing Iz and Rani, uh, let me give you uh, maybe uh, just uh, a quick update on Dar al Kalama University. Uh, first of all, we are excited that this uh, September we are going to launch two new programs. Uh, first of all, a Bachelor in Architecture, and we will be the first university in Palestine where architecture is in the art department and not in the engineering department. Uh, this is something uh, exciting, uh, and we think this will add uh, an important touch uh, to architecture in Palestine. Uh, and the other exciting news is that this September also, we are going to launch uh, a new master program uh, in art therapy. Uh, this is the first of its kind uh, master program in all of Palestine. And as you know, uh, with all the depression and oppression that is going on, uh, art therapy is really important uh, to bring healing to our people. Uh, and we are excited that in September we will launch this new uh, master program. In terms of construction, we have uh, two new uh, construction uh, uh, projects going on. First of all, uh, Rami Zahikuri, uh, entrepreneurial and innovation hub. Uh, we started with a construction uh, and that's going on uh, very well. And we hope by uh, September, late September, early October, to be able to inaugurate uh, this hub that actually was funded by 
the chair uh, of our uh, board here in Palestine, uh, Mr. Zahi uh, Kuri, uh, in memory of his son that died two years ago. Uh, the other uh, construction project is the Hospitality Educational Center. Uh, we finished, uh, uh, as you might know, the uh, educational kitchen, uh, and this is fully functioning that, uh, uh, since January. Uh, and uh, now we are finalizing the architectural drawings uh, for the uh, educational restaurant. Uh, that uh, going to be really the landmark uh, for our university. It's a glass structure uh, uh, overlooking uh, the old city of Bethlehem, Jerusalem, uh, the Dead Sea, Jordan. Uh, I mean, it's a stunning view from up there. And we hope uh, in, a, uh, in a more than a year to be able to inaugurate this facility uh, as well. Uh, all of this is going on while Palestine is going through tough times. Uh, you might have heard uh, what's happening in Jenin. Uh, on a daily basis, there are young Palestinian assassinated, killed. There are homes that are burned by Jewish settlers uh, in the north. Um, and amidst all of that, uh, we are trying really to focus on our vision and mission and to educating the next generation of creative leaders in Palestine. And two of those creative leaders are Iz and Rani uh, from Hebron. Both of them are in the master program and I would like to welcome them. And we will hear more uh, about their background, about the context in Hebron, uh, as well as about uh, the projects that they are working on, including uh, their uh, uh, master thesis and master projects that they are going to embark on uh, very soon. So Iz and Rani, uh, welcome here to this Bright Stars of Bethlehem webinar. Thank you, Dr. Mitri. Uh, nice to meet you all. And thank you for having me and for having Rani. We are very excited to speak about our work. And uh, let's start uh, from the beginning. My name is Iz Jabari. Uh, I am a, an artist and a researcher and a student in Dar al Kalima University. I work in different projects of art, specifically on performance art and visual arts in the city of Hebron. Uh, I was born in Hebron and I practice all my work inside the city. Uh, first project that uh, we started as a collective of artists, me and Rani and other artists, Ala. Uh, we start a project called Masahat, uh, and the goal of this project to um, uh, um, increase the participation of the community inside the old city of Hebron. Actually, he Hebron, it's one of the oldest city in the world, and uh, it's lived now very difficult time after um, the occupation uh, from six, seven until now. And uh, unfortunately, we have settler in the middle of the city, inside the old city of Hebron. And we have this of fighting about narrative and all the conflict that the settler created. And with time, uh, the old city faced a lot of uh, uh, bad condition uh, doing the settler movement. And they tried to empty the city uh, in years. So they put a very strategic uh, plan to empty the old city using different, uh, different politic and different use of, uh, of violence inside the city. So with the time, uh, the situation of the old city uh, be very bad and the people start to get out from it, the Hebronese people, because what the settlers do actually with the army and with all the guns, and now, uh, before like six months ago, uh, they install uh, on the gate, on the checkpoint that in, in the entrance of the city, they uh, install a new uh, uh, automatic machine guns that work and that operate by the uh, art, uh, the AI, yani in intelligent artifacts. And with time, as you see, 
through the picture, they also they start to get empty. And this, through our collective of artists, we start to think how we can uh, make the old city of Hebron alive again through art and culture. And how we can raise this very old culture and very uh, authentic uh, uh, um, uh, culture of Hebron. And as we know, Hebron on the list of UNESCO, and we are as an international craft city. And now, as the situation, as you see by the picture, it's really the situation bad. So through our movement, we think how we can increase also the, participat uh, the participation of the community inside the city. So we start our project Masahat, and we run an, a performance art inside the historic places with engaging the community with our movement and we try to change the situation through art to ask ourselves a question to change the situation what we can do as the you know uh, the narrative people what we can do as indigenous people live in the area and we start to lose our identity because what happened with the occupation and through this uh, project, we implement a lot of activity in the performance art as we rehabilitate an uh, old Turkish bath and we run through it, different kind of performance art. We use uh, hidden places inside the city to do an exhibition. First exhibition, actually, we do it with Rani. It's called uh, Build on the Unknown. And uh, through the movement of youth also and volunteer that we uh, clean all these historic places and try to use it again. And we engage the community with, uh, with us through storytelling, through theater, music, different kind of art. And actually a movement was very good. Uh, with all the difficulty that we face it inside the old city because, you know, uh, there are no authority there. It's controlled by the army. It's not easy to enter and get out from the old city. But Walakin, we did it and we did a lot of activity that we engaged different, uh, different category of the community. Now we are working on a project called uh, Mandalun. And Mandalun, it's an uh, experimental art lab that we feel the need of this experimental art lab because the art movement in the city, it's really shy and it's need a lot of support. So through this experimental art lab, we try to uh, engage the craftsman with the artist, with the students, and we try to um, bring uh, a, new, uh, uh, a new blood inside uh, the artist movement in Hebron. So now we work under Mandalun, and Mandalun, it's uh, it's uh, we run it through it different uh, kind of workshop in art and in culture and in handicraft. Um, and now uh, I didn't know we need to speak now in uh, more in uh, why we go also to Dar el Kaliman. What's why it's so important for us. Uh, to uh, develop ourselves in the field of art. So Dar el Kalima, as you know, it's in Bethlehem. It's really near to Hebron. It's the same like it's, we consider it the same uh, geographic area. And uh, uh, when we see the, the program of Dar el Kalima, we get really interesting on it because it's the first major in Palestine in the field of culture management. It's the first master in culture management and in fine art. Uh, so Rani go um, on con contemporary art and I go through uh, uh, Master of uh, Management of Culture and Institution. And through Dar el Kalima, we start to know more about the artist field on Palestine because it's linked us with the group of artists coming from all over Palestine. We have it from uh, El Julan, we have people from Ramallah, Nablus, Jenin, uh, Bethlehem, and all of them, it's really uh, professional artists. They work in the field. And I think this the major thing that helped us that we like uh, build a network together. And we try to think how we can work and collaborate together through this uh, through this master. And we already the first years has a lot of ideas that we are really exciting to implement, inshallah, in the next years that coming. And we felt like 
it's really important for us that now we think in out loud and we try also to gather our community, our artist community together, that we can help each other to understand the situation, to understand what mechanism can, can we work on it. And actually it's a lot. We can do a lot through art and culture. And I think Dar el Kalima take the invitation to bring us all together and also by providing uh, the facility, by providing uh, what we need, it will uh, help us a lot to say what we need to say as a collective of artists and as a, a individual that we work in our areas to change the situation and make it better. Uh, yeah, thank you, Iz, I think for this uh, introduction. Um, by the way, uh, Iz, as he said, he's from Al Jabari family, which is actually one of the uh, maybe largest uh, extended families uh, in Hebron with uh, its roots uh, in that uh, city since hundreds of years. Um, we move now maybe to Rani uh, to hear from you. Uh, before we do, Mitri, I'd love to um, just make a transition comment if I could. So Please. when I was in Hebron, I, I met uh, Iz and he took us around the city. And before, before Ronnie joined us, Iz and I were able to happen to meet up with a gentleman who was very upset and he wanted to share with us. He, an older gentleman was holding the hand of his grandson. He was very upset because he wanted to show us in the empty streets with all of the doors closed up. He wanted to show us uh, and talk to us about how his business had been closed down. So Iz, can you speak to that a little bit? I was very compelled by this story. He's a veteran. This gentleman is a veterinarian. And um, yeah. there's his little grandson. This story broke my heart. And is can you speak to that a little bit? Yes, actually, the old city of Hebron was a very crowded city in back in time, uh, until 2000. Uh, in 2000, the Israelis closed the old city and they closed the main street that linked the south of Hebron with north of Hebron. And people start to get out from the city because what the settlers do and how they close the city for a long, long time. And actually, this is street where, where we are walking, it was a very crowded and a very famous market back in time. And this man, his, his house built for uh, a hundred of years. And when the settler came and the Israeli, and they built an, a military camp next to his house. So by the military order, they closed the house and uh, banned him from opening his shop again, his clinic actually, and his house because it's linked together. And this like one case from thousands of cases. Now we have more than 3,000 shops closed by the military order inside the old city of Hebron. And that's not enough because also what the Israeli do, they go on the street and they also try to make a trouble, beat young people to not come back again. And now actually they use a technology, it's called the Blue Wolf, to track all the Palestinians because all the cameras inside the old city, it's tracking the face. And they try to collect all the data because they need to close the old city uh, uh, in gates because they bought gates, a lot of gates, but they need to close all the all the city, the old city. So this one a case from a thousand cases, as I mentioned, and it's really hard because people, you know, their history it's linked to the old city. It's where we are rooted. It's where our our history and culture as a craft city, as a city full of culture. And now when they cut it and they take it and they make it as, you know, a piece of cake, like they cut it everywhere, it's make people lose their identity. And this is very dangerous because who we are if we didn't link to our history, who we are if we didn't know our root and we cannot visit our houses, our, our grandfather and grandmother houses. So... It's built a sorrow inside our soul. And it's not easy to live also with these difficulty with, you know, uh, settler with all the, the procedure. So, yeah, I mean, 
I cannot tell you how much there are stories there and how much people suffering until now. Maybe you walk on the old city and sometimes I, I really like people to see the positive things inside the old city, but you cannot like uh, hide the truth. You cannot hide the sorrow and the pain that people feel there. So you. actually, and I invite you also, all of you to visit Hebron and to see the situation in a close, uh, in a close in the ground. And I hope some days this situation will change. I hope people recognize how much it's important to to you know stop a conflict and stop occupation to do what they do on our cities in Palestine. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, it's very heartbreaking, but it's also I was struck by the juxtaposition of the of the sorrow and the pain and the oppression, but also the, the glimmers of hope and the um, the incredible art that we saw there, like the Hebron glass, but also, um, you know, the culture that is, is stirring up uh, and, you know, working with these theater troops. Also the, um, the Turkish bath, that was fascinating as well. Um, I was also struck by the, when I walked through the um, shops or the market and how in Jerusalem, the markets are thriving and there's so many people. In Hebron, there's, it seemed very empty, you know, with the people shopping. So again, to reiterate what as is was saying, we invite all of our friends who make trips to um, Palestine, to the Holy Land, to visit Hebron. It really is a city to be visited and um, to be celebrated with, with the arts that are going on there, which does bring us and transition us back to Ronnie and, and Reverend Dr. Mitri, who has created this um, incredible opportunity for these young people to uh to flourish in their arts and i um i think ronnie is an incredible example and i just want to show everybody refer you to this piece of art behind me i'm so excited because when i was in hebron i did not mean to do this but i just had to buy a piece of ronnie's art we went to his studio and um we we saw how uh is and Ronnie or have a collaboration there. I'll let you speak about that in a second, but I just want to show you this piece of art, which is beautiful. And Ronnie, can you tell us, Tiffany's going to put up uh, the photo that it was from Gaza. There is a um, photographer in Gaza who I believe took a photo, set this photo up, and then Ronnie uh, painted this picture after the photo. So there's the photo of my painting. And Ronnie, can you share with us about the story about what inspired you to paint this photo? Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I am Rani Sharabati. About uh, this painting and uh, this uh, photo, I, I make it when I was uh, study uh, visual art uh, in Jerusalem. So we usually try to make uh, some painting uh, from uh, photo. So that uh, was a really famous photo to Gaza and different uh, a different photo because we know Gaza, we know Gaza, it's a war place and we know the issues uh, there. So this photo, it's really and uh, give you hope and give you uh, to change your uh, thinking about uh, Gaza. So I try to make it uh, and use uh, more uh, color. This uh, photo to Ibrahim Faraj and he is a really famous uh, photographer, uh, artist. And uh, I'm try to make uh, this photo as a painting to يعني, to change our uh, thinking about uh, the place. Thank you, Ronnie. I love it. I absolutely love it. Usually it's in, I, I just got it framed and usually it's in my family room, but I brought it up here so we could show all of our friends. And Mitri, do you want to maybe um, direct some questions towards Ronnie about um, his connections? I, I would, we would love to hear from you and your tie-ins. Um, about DAK. Oh, I think Mitri's frozen. Okay, <laughs> I'll, oh. I'll ask you. Oh, are you okay, good? Mitri. Okay, you're good. Mitri, you wanna do you wanna direct the questioning with Ronnie? Uh, yeah, uh, Ronnie, maybe you can uh, tell us something about uh, your major now. Uh, in contemporary art, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe why you chose this uh, uh, mm -hmm. um, specialization, uh, 
and uh, what are some of the projects you are involved in right now? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I would love to start uh, told about my whole experience uh, and then go to Dar al Kalama University and why I chose uh, Dar al Kalama exactly. Uh, I'm 23 years old right now. I am finished my bachelor in Jerusalem and uh, that's uh, really far uh, away from uh, Hebron. And uh, I'm affected uh, about uh, the situation there and uh, all my art project is dealing with the landscape uh, uh, place, how, how I see this place, how uh, I affected about uh, the road, the borders, the city, the camp, the old city, all of this stuff. And when I finish my bachelor, I think about uh, uh, make my own project. So I will start with uh, graffiti art project in Hebron. And I am try to make street art and graffiti and uh, make money from uh, that project. And after one year, uh, I think about uh, the next uh, step in my life. So I think about uh, to complete a uh, master degree in uh, fine in art. So uh, Dar al Kalima University, it's uh, the first uh, university make uh, this program. And it's nearly from Hebron. And I am uh, participated in uh, Ismail Shamut Prize. So I know Dar al Kalima, I know a lot of uh, students they study there. And uh, I know a lot of uh, people. And the Dar al Kalima is really a uh, really great uh, university because all of people, it's like a community of artists. So that's helped you a lot uh, to, uh, in your uh, career. So then, uh, uh, yeah, in the same time, I start uh, my project in Hebron because I'm thinking about my community and. Uh, our culture, so I am build a, a Murtasam art studio, and it's the first art studio in Hebron, because in Hebron we have uh, uh, some issues about uh, uh, how people uh, understand art. Uh, as I is, uh, say, yani, Hebron, it's really different situation, and uh, people and community uh, not usually understand art, and the art is not the most important uh, thing. So I am uh, start uh, building uh, this place. In Hebron, we don't have any galleries to make uh, exhibitions. So always we think about uh, different place to use. Uh, I am use my uh, fatherland uh, to build uh, this studio. I am I'm dealing with this studio as an uh, installation uh, artwork. I'm start to make uh, design and uh, make uh, 3D models. And then uh, I participated to build the process. And uh, that's take uh, one year uh, to build it. And the idea about uh, this uh, studio, uh, it's uh, make uh, a place uh, to me to make my painting, to make my art, and uh, also to make a place to different artists. Yani they can use uh, this place uh, uh, like as a residency art, or maybe, maybe we can make a workshop, maybe we can uh, make a different uh, activity inside uh, this place and uh, exhibition. So uh, my family helped me a lot with, when I start uh, building uh, this place because our work is about the uh, building uh, uh, machines and stuff, and uh, and that take a lot of time uh, to build it. And how I support myself, I am using uh, my talent and my graffiti art uh, to support myself to build some place like this because it's really expensive and take a lot of money and time. And uh, right now inside this place, it's a money activity and money program. Uh, and we use uh, the land to plan it every year. And it's like a resource to support uh, our activity. We make uh, one day on the month. It's a free day to any artist. He can come and use uh, this place. Uh, then I meet uh, Iz and meet uh, different artists in Hebron. And uh, they give me the hope to be in Hebron, to understand uh, the ecosystem in Hebron to learn more about uh, our culture, to know more about uh, what we can do in Hebron exactly, because uh, Hebron, it's really, uh, it's really old, old uh, city and uh, we have a lot of things to think about it, to make uh, art about it. So that's uh, how we take uh, this way. And uh, uh, Murtasam Art Studio, yani right now, uh, I think it's the, the only place uh, in Hebron uh, 
يعني لايك ذس ديزاين اند ذس ميك ذس اكتيفيتي اند رايت ناو اي ام ورك از ان ارت تيشر ان هاي سكول اند ان يونيفرستي سو ذاتس جيف مي مور كونكتد بين ديفرنت بيبول اند ديفرنت كلتشر اند اولويز دي اسك اباوت مي وات يو دو هاو يو بيلد ذس ستوديو وي نيد تو فيزيت يو وي لاف تو سي مور يور ارت So people يعني start interested more about what I do as a painting project or uh, uh, exhibition or some stuff like this. Uh, yeah, Rani, thank you. Uh, I know that both of you are actually also active in Rami Zahikuri uh, Entrepreneurial and Innovation Hub. Uh, maybe you can say a few words about your involvement there. Uh, and uh, uh, what... Uh, What uh, uh, gain you get from being involved uh, in this hub? Yeah, I, I better speak in Arabic or is uh, can translate. In the moment, I had an experience that was very important to me, and it was very important to me to be able to talk to all the people who are in تهتم في جانب الفنون بشكل اكثر عن يعني الرياده مع الفنون هذا شيء نوعا ما حديث في موضوع الرياده وبحاجه كمان لنشوف تجارب ناس مختلفه في هذا الموضوع بالنسبه لي شخصيا بلش شوي شوي على اساس نقدر نترجم راني نو وريز يو جيت ات وكانت يعني مشاركتي ملهمه جدا بحيث انه يعني بتشوف افكار مختلفه ومتنوعه وتقدر انك تفكر بمشروعك بعد التفكير بمشروعك الفني وبايش انت بتعمل. So yeah, I already speak on both me and Rani about uh, Zahi Khouri. And first, we think it's uh, uh, one a kind of uh, uh, Sorry, one a kind of invitation uh, uh, hub. and hub for uh, uh, the artist in uh, in the north, uh, because it's uh, it's given an opportunity and give uh, a chance for the young artist to think about a project that can help the community and that can can help them to develop their uh, work. Actually, we uh, when we start with the hub that uh, we meet uh, different uh, artists uh, from different area of Palestine, and this also uh, through the trip that we take it together and through the workshop that we attend, that it give us many ideas about what we need to focus on it and how we can also present our work to be. Uh, uh, not just an, uh, in a field of art, but also to link it to business and to link it to uh, make it also uh, uh, profit for uh, for us as an artist. So we think uh, we continue in the hub, Rami Zahi Khouri hub, and we continue to also to plan uh, with the main idea of this hub. So when we join for, to Rami Zahi uh, Zahir Khuri Hub, that we start also to blend together about what we needed through it and how we can also develop our relationship together as an artist. So until now, we uh, we work on it and until now, we engage together to blend more and more with time about what we need actually to develop uh, in the future and uh, how we can also help others artists through the hub that we can uh, provide them with our experience and we take it from also uh, ex- uh, other artists' experience. So I think it's a space for interact together and for make uh, creative uh, ideas and work with artists and with uh, the community in uh, Bethlehem and Hebrew. Uh, thank you, Iz. Uh, thank you, Rani, for uh, uh, this uh actually for sharing your experience, your life, uh, the context in which you live, but also your aspiration uh, for the future. I would like here uh, to tell our uh, friends who are watching us, uh, uh, first of all, to encourage them to visit Hebron, as Iz and Rami said, uh, to, to see the apartheid uh, system that is in place, you see it 
uh, crystal clear in Hebron. But also we would like when you visit Hebron, uh, uh, through the authentic tourism uh, travel that we provide, uh, to take you to uh, Rana's uh, gallery, uh, to his project, so that you see and you experience the Palestinian resilience in this context of, uh, of oppression, how our people are resisting uh, through art, through creativity, uh, really to, 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 to save uh, their humanity in this totally unhuman uh, situation. Uh, Chris, I give now uh, the uh, word uh, to you. Thanks, Mitri. Um, it's so exciting to hear about what, you, what you're both doing. I have a few questions for, or one question for each of you. So, um, is I can see that you are in your, I, I believe you're in your home. And the other day you told me that the, uh, the object above your head is a piece of art that you actually created. Is that right? And tell us yes, about that. Yes. So you, you are, you're also an artist, you're a sculptor, right? Yeah. So correct. I was able to see some of your pieces at Ronnie's studio, but tell us about that. Is that, that something you made? Yes, thank you, Chris, to bring this up. Uh, actually, yes, I, I am also a researcher, as, as I mentioned, and I am really interested about uh, the old craft and artisan inside the old city of Hebron. So this is glass made by the artist a long, long time ago inside Hebron as uh, one of my tour to discover the places. I discover an old artist who make this glass, and we start to think about what we can do with this glass, how we can uh, use it in- Repurposing, in, yes. In, yes. Yeah. So I made this for my house and we have many ideas. We plan it inside the Mandalon Experimental Art Lab to work with the glass. Now we have one, the first workshop to manufacture the original way of making a glass on the old city of Hebron. So we will bring the very original material that was used back in time in Hebron, and we need to remake it again. And through this movement, we didn't just know about the, uh, the craft itself, but we know a lot about history. And this is our way of working, that we discover about the history and the art of the city, and we try to implement workshop through young people, and they will, like, specifically uh, students from university, uh, we try to make them understand the local knowledge that, that built this city and how it's linked to their daily life. So one of the things that we feel it as a mission, and it's uh, very important to deliver it to the people that we speak with them about their cultural heritage and, and also their narrative and their local knowledge. And it's very important also to link them with the city. Because we believe if we link the people, the young people with the city in an emotional way, in an interact way, they will engage more and they will uh, stay in the city. Because unfortunately, a lot of artists leave the city to research about different opportunity. And this community, we try to bring it together. It's part of our mission. It's a part, uh, it's a part of our idea, how we link the community of Hebron with the youth and we make this movement alive. I love that. Uh, uh, so go ahead. Uh, uh, Chris, maybe before you ask the second question, I need to apologize. Um, I need to run because we are launching another book in Beirut right now, uh, and it is live event uh, on TV. Uh, they are in person. I will be on Zoom. Uh, so thank you, Iz and Rani, for... Uh, your time and energy and creativity, and we are proud to have you as uh, two of our uh, master students. Uh, wishing all our friends who are watching us tonight a uh, great day and a great weekend that we will stay in touch. Thank, Thank you, Mitri. Take care. Um, Be well. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, I have just a few more questions. Tiffany, could you put up the um, baby picture or the little boy pictures of Iz? Our donors uh, and our friends always love to see the connection of, of when students were little. They really connect. So um, that sort of is a callback to what you were just talking about, how we want to connect the young, the young with the old, the you know the the old um, or the history 
with our young people, right? So I just think it's super cute. Uh, this is, is when he was a little boy. Uh, and it just it just reminds us of the innocence and innocence and the hope. And that's what we're we're doing here. We're connecting, the, and that's what culture is about. It's about you know carrying on that that hope from when you know from our in the wisdom from the people that came before us. So yeah, that's my favorite. It's a very funny picture. <laughs> Um, okay. and, and I can see from your um, photos is that you do did a lot of uh, you do a lot of work with children, and also you run in the, in the art studio as well. So that brings me to my next question: How did you gentlemen meet? How, I, I can tell that you're very good friends, and that you collaborate beautifully together. How did you meet? How did you meet each other? Yeah, Ronnie, you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Actually, we I met Ronnie through our uh, some of uh, art activity uh, through the old city of Hebron, and I saw his work for the first time, and I really get impressed about how much he draw through his heart and how he uh, present also the city, because a lot of uh, Ronnie work it's it's, uh, it's try to speak about the city of Hebron and the cities of Palestine, and. I really get impressed of his work and I feel uh, from the first time that we will do a great thing together. Uh, so we start together working on Masahat and we implement the first exhibition happened in the old city. We use Rani works and it's called, as I mentioned before, the exhibition built on and the unknown. So we heading an, an exhibition inside an old Turkish bath inside the city and we give a people map so they try to research about this uh, exhibition and they find it and they enjoy the artwork of Rani speaking about the old city of Hebron. So from that point, we uh, collaborate together with many projects. We work uh, closely together through his also Murtasam. And he very, uh, yani he welcome uh, Mandalon to uh, establish in his art studio. So we use also the studio to run all our activity there. So uh, it, 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 it's been a while until now. So we like three years now together, working together, and we really uh, felt we will yani, achieve, inshallah, great things in the future. That's wonderful. And Ronnie, uh, I'm going to ask about your location, where you're at. Can you tell us where you are right now and what you're doing, what project you're working on? Uh, now I am in uh, Paris. Uh, Paris, am, uh, yeah. Yeah. I am taking international uh, to art. I will be to four months to make uh, my art project uh, in Paris. And I have uh, a lot of exhibition uh, in uh, October in different uh, places. Uh, who sponsored yeah. you? What, which organization sponsored you for that? Uh, it's Al-Qatan uh, Foundation and uh, the Taiwan uh, Association and the Consulate of France and the Ministry of Culture. That's really cool. Okay, last question for both of you. And very briefly, if you can share, starting with is, can you share, please, your dreams with our friends? Like, what what is your dream in life? What's your what's your mission? What's your goal? Yeah, and it's always for me, uh, and I feel it also, Rani, the same. Um, it's also to change the situation, to change the the what we live as young uh, of artists. And sometimes it's so difficult to change the situation, but I think if we change what it, inside our heart, maybe the situation will get better. We try to work very hard to bring the culture and the art in the, to be the language that we speak. And we stop conflict and, you know, the, the bad thing to happen through art. And maybe the biggest dream that we dream now about it, that we hope to change uh, the situation in Hebron through our art and to establish a very strong movement through young artists uh, to speak up and to speak on the city and to have like a space that we can present our work and to present ourselves as we capable of 
uh, speak about the Palestinian case through art and to, uh, you know, deliver our voice to all around the world. That's really, really inspiring. And I want to say to both of you that it seems to me that your goal and your, your mission and your dreams are to be the next generation of creative leaders in Palestine. And you're staying in Palestine and you're wanting to make a difference in the community. And that ties in so beautifully with what our mission, our, our goal um, at Bright Stars of Bethlehem is. And that's to support, you know, uh, the next generation of creative leaders in Palestine through our support of, of uh, Dara Kalamini University. Um, as I uh, make my final comments to our friends, Tiffany's going to roll some of Rami's paintings and show some of Rami's paintings. Um, also is there's a, a friend of ours that um, asked if your if your art piece behind your head does it light up? Can you light it up? Yeah, I, unfortunately, until now, I need to link the electricity. Okay. <laughs> I will send later a picture. We'll yes, visit you again and you yeah, send a picture of it lighting up. That's awesome. Yes. Okay, yes. And it looks yes. like Bonnie's paintings, many of them now are really feature, um, you know, the uh, Hebron. Is it mostly Hebron? No, no, not all of them. It's about uh, Palestinian landscape and uh, how the Palestinian landscape is a change between uh, the old city, between the city, between the camp, between the town, between the uh, empty places. So I am trying to make uh, my uh, artwork uh, from my memory. So I'm going to That's different beautiful. places. So you, don't, place you don't use photos mostly. You use memory. Uh, the, the, when, when I am, when I start, uh, at, this, at uh, this project, I am I use uh, photo because I'm photographer. But then I am uh, just in my memory. Amazing, beautiful, inspiring, gentlemen. Thank you so so much for joining us today. And I, I just want to say to our to our donors, to our friends, to our viewers that um, we need you. We need you to um, support this type of uh, incredible inspiring leadership that these two gentlemen are showing. Um, this is what your funding of Bright Stars does. It, it changes the world. Look at this. Look what these guys are doing. Look at these, this beautiful artwork. Um, I, I'm just, again, having visited Palestine recently, I, I knew that Dar al Kalama was a special place before I visited because I've been there once before. And of course, all the stories that I've heard. But going there this time, my heart is just so full. Um, you know, our at Bright Stars, our slogan is "Hope is what we do," and this year, our what we talk about is "See the hope, be the hope." Today, we've really seen some hope, huh? and now I ask you, friends, please uh, continue to support Bright Stars with your gifts, uh, with your volunteerism. We thank all of the ambassador volunteers that we have. Um, we've got a uh, virtual gala coming up on September 16th. We ask that you all register for that. Also, uh, your gifts today um, will translate into um, hope for, for friends and future leader, Palestinian, well, actually current Palestinian leaders like these two gentlemen. So we love you all. We thank you for your support. And uh, we hope that you will someday either visit Palestine or continue um, supporting us through, through watching the stories on this podcast. Take care, everybody, and have a great day.